again, or uh, Carol Anderson. And in last session, we talked a lot about the land run. But this session, I wanted to focus a little bit more on the wagons that were used when people moved across our country to a new land and settled. And also um, a little bit about some of the things that we would have brought in the wagon that would have been considered necessities. So I'm gonna use this book a little bit, and it's called The Daily Life in a Covered Wagon. Absolutely love this book. But inside, um, I think this is just an excellent uh, drawing of a wagon. Now this happens to be a Murphy wagon, but the Conestoga wagon was also very popular, as was the Prairie Schooner. All of them varied in size a little bit, but the average size was about four feet wide and 10 feet long. And that was for everything that a family needed. Now, not only did they put things inside the wagon, they also tied a lot of things on the outside of the wagon. But these wagons had weight limits and they had to be very careful about how they distributed the weight in the wagon so that they weren't top heavy um, and tip or other issues that would come up, okay? So the cover on the wagon was typically a big piece of fabric and it was waterproofed, it was canvas, usually with linseed oil, so that helped keep it a little bit drier. And the wood that they used for the um, bows here that secured the fabric over top was usually made of hickory wood. It was a little more flexible. And then the wheels would be made out of elm and oak and ash, and they would be firmly bolted on to the base, okay? So one of the things that I think would be very fun for you to think about doing this next week is making your own wagon. And really, if you just find a shoe box and you get an old pillowcase or some extra fabric that mom says you can use, um, you can pretty well make a, a wagon. Get some cardboard, you know, you get boxes on your front porch, save a few of those, make some wheels, put them on there with paper fasteners onto the box. And um, for this bowed part here in the top, you can use wire. Uh, coat hangers, and then you get that fabric and you put it over top of it. And what's really fun is if you kind of think about what you would put in your wagon and begin to make that. Make yourself a couple of people that would have been in a family, maybe some animals, um, and certain special things, including some barrels because those were really important to store things in. And just have fun with this project. Do a little bit of um, your own, you know, research. See what you come up with. Have a lot of fun with that. Okay, so let's talk about nuts and bolts, what we might have had in the wagon. And as you can see right here, I have a little suitcase. We call it little. But back then, it was probably a pretty large suitcase. It wouldn't have just been for one person. At least two people would have had their items in here, maybe three. And uh, nothing fancy, that's for sure, but, you know, mom would have made sure she had a bonnet. And so would have all the young ladies always using a bonnet, wearing it to keep the sun off of their faces. So that would be really important. Of course, a couple of clothes if they had a little baby in the family. This is a really old little baby dress, all right? that actually was in a covered wagon. This would have been like, oh, a nightgown perhaps. Pretty special one too, with lots of eyelet on it, okay? And that would have been taken, right? And that's very old too, from the 1800s. Um, maybe, as you can see here, I have a few pieces of china. Mama always wanted to bring some china if she possibly could. So maybe some teacups and a, a teapot, maybe a few pieces of silver. She was really fortunate 
And then when she packed those in the covered wagon, she would have definitely put them down in a barrel, which would have had flour or cornmeal or something like that and pushed them way down in there. And that would have um, acted as a cushion to keep some of those more breakable precious items safe. Maybe a few hand-stitched table covers they would have had. Um, if you had a sister, the sister most undoubtedly would have had a special sort of um, rag doll, something that maybe mommy had hand-stitched for her that she could play with and I take the clothes off, put the clothes on, and just spend lots of time having fun with that. Perhaps um, some stitching to work on on a long tra uh, trail ride somewhere, you know, coming to the land run. That would have helped pass the time. Um, undoubtedly, you would have needed one of these, right? Because you're going to be making a lot of cornbread when you're on the trail and you're trying to get from point A to point B. So you would have had one of these. And also, uh, you would have had some quilts and blankets that you would have made. And you would have made sure that you had plenty of these to use. Some of them would have been very special and you wouldn't want them to get ruined and maybe you wouldn't put them down on the ground. Others of them would have been, you know, just fun picnic quilts that you would use on your trip or to keep warm, for goodness sakes. Now, um, I have a famous painting here that I printed off by Robert Barrett, and it has a woman standing in the foreground, and she's got some wildflowers in a basket. Back here's the covered wagon, and she's wearing an apron. And I have an apron on right now, too, and. Uh, I just want to take another minute or so and then I'll be finished, but aprons were incredibly important back in uh, pioneer days. And sometimes women wore an apron that was the whole length of their dress and covered up here and tied back here and tied at the waist, and we called that a pinafore apron. And other times they were just half waist apron, but usually they were pretty long and covered a lot of the dress. Reason being, we didn't have very many clothes, and it was just practical to wear an apron. That meant you didn't have to do as much laundry, and you had many chores to do, and so the less laundry you had to do, the better. Well, not only did mamas wear aprons, but school teachers wore aprons. If you owned a shop, you usually wore an apron. Even a secretary wore an apron. It was just a practical thing to have. Well, not only did it cover up your dress, but, you know, if you were way far out in the prairie and you saw somebody coming yonder, it would not be unusual for you to untie your apron and wave it up in the air like a flag trying to get somebody's attention that, hey, I'm over here. So it was kind of used as a flag sometimes. You were out in the hen house and there were lots of eggs that you needed to bring into the house. You would take your apron and fill it up with those eggs and take it in. You're out in the vegetable garden and you're picking vegetables and you filled up your basket to overflowing and you've got a few more vegetables to pick. That morning, you would stick them in your apron and take it on inside. And so, sometimes the apron was used, you know, of course, to wipe your hands when you're out busy working or maybe something sad had happened and you were crying, you might wipe some tears away, or it was a terribly hot day and you just needed something to clean off your face, you were dripping with sweat, you might use it that way too. Maybe you had a very shy brother or a very shy sister. They might be known to hide under your mother's apron if a visitor came to the house and they were a little bit scared. So. Aprons, yes, kind of fun to think about all the different ways that they were used in Pioneer Days. Well, that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's going to stimulate you to think and be creative and remember, maybe even read some of those fun Pioneer books. 
you know, and learn some more things about this time period. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.